I used to look up at the stars and get jealous of the sky And I wonder what it's like to get to hold them every night And how they first met and what it must have been like So it's been one year of living in a caravan with our family, travelling on the road around New Zealand. It's a beautiful destination and a traveller's dream, and we get to call this place home. What makes New Zealand so special is the diversity of the landscape and the low population. We had one year living in this caravan on the road, but if you were new here, we left our home in Rutsarua in May 2022, which we have rented out. We hit the airport in Auckland, we jumped on a plane to travel to the United States to participate in the Camp America program, where we got to live in the woods of North Carolina. Our kids were registered campers and me, Mike, and my wife Sophie were once again on staff here at this beautiful camp, Camp Chestnut Ridge, for four months. But this video isn't about that, it's about life on the road. And if you're familiar with this channel, expect to see our favourite places, the most beautiful scenic drone shots, as well as my favourite music. We share some highs and some of the lower points. Looking back, it's incredible what can be covered in a year-long epic family road trip. Van life is very much glamorised online, and we've tried to show you what real life full time travel looks like. You don't really hear too much about how much you'll miss your families and your friends. For us it's been a year since we have seen some of our closest people. The sun doesn't always shine when you're camping, and sometimes the wind is the destroyer of fun times. Or how your caravan can be soaked with condensation and your clothes start growing mould. Or well, sometimes it's just so muddy and wet right at your doorstep. Just getting to be on the road was hard work, saving money, working extra, renovations on the house, selling our possessions and throwing things out. But now that's behind us and we are living this life, it feels like it's been a small cost to pay. To have all of this time with our children making memories that will be with us for the rest of our lives. We've also met some incredible people while we've been out on the road. Some of them have helped us out a lot, especially when we were struggling with solar power on those short winter days. We've loved being able to stay in our favourite places a little longer because our time is ours and we simply can. We've gone to places we wouldn't have because normally we just wouldn't have the time. Time is one of the best things about this lifestyle, something we felt we had not much of before this great adventure. But before we get into these campsites, if you have some questions about this lifestyle, kids on the road, money, caravans, motorhomes, fire your questions down in the comments and we'll answer every single one. When we arrived home to Aotearoa, New Zealand in September last year, we were straight into the caravan. We had to fill in some time as Soph had a knee surgery booked in, which required some recovery time for a couple of weeks. But then we were off on the road living the free life, living off saved money from work and possessions that we had sold, hoping that we could stretch out our money for as long as we could, or at least until Christmas 2023. Life on the road came pretty easy for us. We've always been campers and all our kids grew up camping in tents from babies. We knew some of the struggles that we'd face when we left. We'd have multiple days of bad weather. But our kids were our main worry, worried if this was actually the best thing for them. Pulling them out of a school they loved going to, taking them away from really good friends they'd grown up with, as well as the social interactions that they have at school. Was this life on the road experience really in their best interests? Well, it took some time. We had many moments and we still do where homesickness or friendship sickness pops up. We'll look forward to catching up with all our people likely in February when we return to the North Island. I can now confirm that our kids love living in the caravan, they love doing correspondence school with their online teacher at Takuda, and their education is going well. Life on the road has brought out all their creativity. Sometimes their made up games go on for days. 
They tackle challenges like champs and this has really boosted their confidence. They are great at making new friends when there are other kids around to play with and they have no problem talking with adults or older people that we meet in campgrounds which is very encouraging to see. Leaving Rotorua with the whole summer ahead and our bank account filled, one of our first stops was Ohope Beach which has some great freedom camping options. So staying in camping grounds has not really been an option for us. The average overnight stay in a holiday park would be around $80 a night for our family and our caravan is very well equipped for off-grid living which is why we purchased this style of caravan. Our trip would have been over very quickly if we were paying those prices. The whole way along we've seeked out the free options, the dock camps where we can use our yearly pass and staying with NZMCA members on their private property which normally is around $10 a night. From Uhopi Beach we followed the stunning coastal road along the East Cape, a remote and wild wilderness, filled with stunning beachfront campsites that cost you nothing to stay at. They even had some random dump station tanks at these free sites for disposing toilet cassette waste. Kaiawa between Tolaga Bay and Tokomaru Bay must have been one of our favourite sites across the East Cape. What a beautiful beach and there was no one around. The East Cape has been hammered with storms over the last summer. They say most of the North Island didn't even have a summer in 2023, but Hawke's Bay and Gisborne have been hammered. We were in Tolaga Bay for the first decent storm that happened this summer in early November. The first of many though. Pretty sad to see the beach destroyed and covered in wood debris, as well as the effects that it's had on the local people all the way along the coast. After a really big grocery shop and meeting another full-time family in Gisborne, we departed for the Mahia Peninsula, a place that none of us have ever been before. We didn't realise that our braking system had never been calibrated with our truck, and as we descended a really big hill out of Gisborne, we realised that our caravan brakes were not working. And we were fully loaded with groceries and water. This was pretty scary for us as the truck brakes were smoking as we were going down the hill and there was no way that we could have stopped if we wanted to in an emergency. But this was simply resolved by calibrating and we got to enjoy Mahi at this beautiful free camp at Upotama. The month of December we enjoyed more freedom camping sites through the Hawke's Bay. It seemed that we couldn't string two sunny days together in a row though, it just wanted to rain. And over this month we spent plenty of time catching up with friends and family who we likely wouldn't see for a year as we ventured towards Wellington to hop on the ferry and head to the South Island in mid-January. Without any income, coming back north wasn't something we had budgeted for, costing over $1,100 for a return journey for our family, and that's with a discount. We plan to just make the most of the South Island and a whole year of adventures here, and arriving here felt like such a milestone for our travel. We booked our crossing to the South Island for mid-January, as generally the first two weeks are when campgrounds are at their busiest and finding a campsite might have been an issue for us. White's Bay was our first stop for the South Island and Toby still ranks this as his number one camping site. He loves the walks, the beach, was safe, gathering mussels, there was a creek right next to our caravan. This was a great start to the South Island. Next up, Kaikoura. It's everything the pictures show you that it is. Wildlife galore, those massive mountains coming right down from the ocean. We found ourselves pulling over so many times on our drive and luckily there was a lot of places we could pull in with our caravan. I'd say Kaikoura is a town that I could easily live in with great hiking trails, all the shops that you need in a small town, 
beaches, fishing, diving. We did have some incredible weather while we were there. From Kaikoura, we made the decision that we were going to fast track our travel towards the Catlins at the bottom of the South Island. We wanted to be there while it was still summery as we know that this place can get very cold. There are plenty of videos of all the places that we have stayed heading south on our travels as we are skipping a massive part of the country right now. But our first night in the northern part of the Catlins, the southern lights came out, something that I didn't think I'd ever get to see. Now the Catlins aren't quite what I expected. I thought rainforests, mountains, great diving and fishing, penguins and seals, and all of these things are true, but it didn't feel so isolated to me at all. There is a lot of farmland around and hills, the weather in the water was warm and sunny, and we really didn't need to rush down here, arriving in early March. We spent just over two weeks in the area, and water and places to empty our tanks was a challenge in this area. Some of the campsites did provide toilets which we welcomed to save filling up our caravan toilet cassette. We found some great locations to gather power and we enjoyed the beautiful beaches and wildlife in this area. Oh and did I forget to say we also got to swim with dolphins which is one of Jade's most favourite animals so this was a very memorable moment for us all and a great way for us to finish off our time in the Catlins. The next spot, Cascade Creek, this place just blows my mind in the Eglinton Valley. If you haven't seen the video of this spot, I'm going to check a link up the top, it's well worth a watch. The drive in here is something out of the movies. The golden tussock grass, the snow-capped mountains that are so massive, it's hard to show the true perspective on camera. But there is a large dock camp just before the road gets too steep and windy for caravans, with crystal clear water, walks and just incredible scenery. We day tripped around the area from here, exploring in the Hollyford Valley, and so paddled with her dad out on the Milford Sounds, a bucket list activity. We also spent lots of time plunging into the freezing cold but crystal clear waters in the rivers. It was amazing, it was so blue. Central Otago, renowned for being a spectacular place for its scenery, but we also wanted to witness the autumn colours. With not so much native forest around this part of the country, it transforms in the autumn from green leaves into beautiful orange, yellow and red during April and May. Autumn is Sophie's favourite time of the year, watching the colours change. And Central Otago also has some great freedom camping spots around the dam, rivers and the lakes. And this makes it pretty easy to be able to stay in the area because there are so many options. It's also renowned for its sunny, dry weather as well. By mid-autumn we were in for a big learning curve with our solar system and batteries. With the days getting shorter, our battery system was just not keeping up with our power usage. And this became one of the biggest problems we faced over the winter. We had the colder weather, the shorter days due to the low angle of the sun and just how much more power you use when it's dark early. But one of our followers put us onto these pretty cheap 800 watt inverter generators. They cost $350 online but we have used ours all the time now over the last four months to charge things like our caravan batteries, laptops for the kids school and our portable EcoFlow power bank which runs my computer so that I can edit these videos. Next up Twizel. I love this part of New Zealand in the Mackenzie Basin. It's quiet, it's barren, it's rugged, it's dry, it's raw and here we stayed with the Goodwin family, some awesome people who we now call our friends. Twizel is a great spot if you want to experience some true winter conditions, which was right up our alley. Frozen ponds, hoar frosts, freezing daytime temperatures. We spent three weeks here while I picked up some work. We decided that this lifestyle was too good to think about ending, but with our bank account now emptying out after nine months with no income, 
winter seemed the best time to find some work and start putting some money back into our account so hopefully that we would be able to go through the next summer without worrying how we were going to pay for fuel and diesel because when the sun's out would you rather be at work or at the beach so luckily i did pick up a few good paying jobs plastering but that wouldn't even see us through the winter Mountains yet to climb. Every day before you, I was holding down. If you want the stars, I can pull them down. Baby, in my arms, you'll be safe and sound. Not far from here at Aoraki Mount Cook, New Zealand's biggest mountain, we had incredibly sunny blue sky days to explore more frozen lakes. The kids all wanted to walk on a frozen pond or lake, but me and Sophie were a bit hesitant to let them wander out on the ice because New Zealand's not really known as an ice skating country. But up at the Sealy Tarns, a bit of a climb up, we found the mountain pond or the tarn frozen solid. The kids were so happy up there skating around this place is so well set up for families with loads of different walks and places to explore. There's also a really good internet here. After a pretty exciting winter so far, we kind of got a little bit bored. The skies turned grey, there wasn't ice or even frosts to play with. So after looking around for where our next adventure should take us, we thought we'd try the Ashburn Lakes. With snow in the forecast, this spot sits at 700 metres, so hopefully we'd get snow here. What we discovered was the most beautiful place to free camp. The reflections on the lake showing the surrounding snow-capped mountains, the massive expanses of golden tussock mountain grass, there was nothing blocking your view here. It was so good that our good friends Trevor and Michelle came to the South Island with their caravan to meet up with us that we came back here a second time bringing them along. We enjoyed the campfires, walks and sunny Canterbury days. This spot is definitely up there, it's got to be in the top 5 for me. When you start a major trip like this, where you plan for several months or a year or so away, you have a bucket list of things you want to do. Places you want to visit and experiences you want to experience. For us one was getting snowed in. Being North Islanders, this is pretty hard to achieve, although not impossible, but the South Island presents lots more opportunities for this, and after a bunch of failed attempts to get snowed in, we knew the Lewis Pass was notorious for snow closures. So we went to the dock camp, which is close to the road summit, and after a few failed days, the snow finally started falling, and we were all so glad we got the experience that we had talked about through summer, autumn, and winter. Once we left the snow, we headed for the South Island's west coast, a part of New Zealand we'd never been to before. It was noticeably warmer on the coast, which meant we were back in shorts and t-shirts in the daytime, even though it was August. We stopped off at the Gentle Andy campsite after being told by many people this spot can't be missed. We really enjoyed our stay at this spot and we loved the pizza oven and all the activities we could do on site and they do a pretty great weekly winter rate of $115 a week on a powered site for two adults for seven days and kids are an extra two bucks a day or $14 a week. Being here also saw the next lot of income for us as there was plenty of renovation work required in the bookable beach accommodation. This meant we were able to add some more funds towards summer travel. Our next stop is far north as you can go on the west coast of the South Island. It's 112 kilometres of dead end road, but the road exists because it's so beautiful up here. It's like you're in the tropics. There's a very small town in Katamea and a dock camp at Kor Hai Hai. It's remote, quiet and peaceful with walks right from the campground, which for us is the perfect setup. There is also the beautiful Oparara Arches, which is a spot to easily spend a whole day exploring. 
gosh, I don't even know how to end this video. We are everyday ordinary people and we felt like doing this was the biggest risk. To leave our home, our friends, our jobs and our kids, well that was the hardest. And we borrowed 100% of the money for our caravan and our truck against the mortgage that we still owe on our home in Rotorua, which is currently rented. And that rental income covers the cost of our debts. So the only outgoings that we have is our food, fuel and the odd night of accommodation that we need to pay for. That this has been the most incredible year and we are grateful that you followed along on our adventures. And we plan to be camping all through the next year as well. There is still so much to see and do and explore. And if you want to follow our daily adventures, we post all the time on Facebook and Instagram and we'd love for this channel to continue to grow. And you can help that by liking this video and dropping us a comment. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next Leopards Go Wild Adventure. Thanks for making it this far through our video. Oh.